Dear colleagues, my name is Gabriela Rossi. I am professor and researcher at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro and co-author of the paper together with my colleagues at Polytechnic of Milan. This presentation shows the results related to Polymi para Rocinha, a project financed by Polytechnic of Milan and originated through a partnership with the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Considering that globally, one in eight people live in slums, this project applied the integrated modification methodology, IMM, to propose a regeneration process and its implementation at Rocinha, one of the largest Brazilian slums located in the city of Rio de Janeiro. The presentation follows an outline which begins with an introduction explaining the context of the project, followed by the fundamentals of a theoretical framework and ended with the results of obtained in two urban services, energy and mobility. The main aspects of this project are discussed then in the conclusions. Well, improving living conditions of slums dwellers is therefore a crucial challenge for making cities and informal settlements sustainable, resilient, inclusive, and safe. The aim of the project Polymi para Rocinha was to integrate several urban services including sanitation, energy, mobility, waste, food delivery and growing, and the flows of information connected to them with the aim of reducing the environmental impact while improving the quality of life of citizens. Its service requires the development of a specific project that empowered by an urban management system will allow the circulation of information between citizens, fostering social inclusion, and raising awareness on the topic of cities resource management. The integration can be possible also through the information and communication technology to promote sustainable economic growth and quality of life with a wise management of natural resources through participatory governance. Uh, that is a vision of smart city, a built environment constantly connected and crossed by different flows like information, energy, goods, and vehicles. Uh, so this is the uh, an overview of the um, IMM methodology and that this is a scientific intervention method uh, developed by Polytechnic of Milan, as already said, as a methodological interpretation of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 11. It offers a synthesis and assessment tools for build environment transformation. Morphology is the common hub through which it's, each theme is related to the rest of to the rest. And IMM defines indeed a set of parameters clustered in seven categories to express various functioning mechanisms of the built environment. They are porosity, proximity, diversity, effectiveness, accessibility, permeability, and interface. And in this slide, you can see the four different phases of this methodology. So uh, regardless of its size, uh, the urban context is considered as a complex adaptive system and based on its systemic relations, modification and retrofit scenarios are, development, are developed. Uh, this slide shows uh, the key categories that, we, that I 
I explained before. And for example, porosity gives an immediate vision of the different height of the buildings. Proximity highlights the areas with stronger presence of services. Accessibility highlights the most and less accessible areas. And diversity shows the range of different functions in each zone. In the, in the paper, it is very well explained, or we, we tried to explain uh, this, the different phases of the methodology. So, and this slide shows an example of um, these key categories applied, of, applied to Rocinha. Um, this is these, these are the results of the investigation phase of IMMM and applied already uh, to Hossini. So, and then in the last phase, this, this, some strategies were defined in order to develop some projects. They are more or less, there are um, this, this slide show this, um, this projects. But what we try to bring here is two examples. We don't have time to explain all the projects, but two of them, we can uh, give an idea. For example, and we choose energy and um, mobility because they are probably the more serious urban problems of the of the um, of this land, of this of this area, this community. So about energy, we propose the design of photovoltaic systems to be installed on buildings with more than three floors above ground in a pilot area of Cosinha. And the project aims at exploiting the solar energy incident on the rooftops to fulfill households' electrical needs. The installation on photovoltaic panels may reduce energy thefts inside the community, ensuring at the same time a more stable, legal, and reliable power grid. To maximize energy self-consumption to cover energy use during nighttime and to further increase power grid reliability, our photovoltaic panels can be coupled with battery storage systems. And hence, energy stored in the batteries may also fulfill electrical needs at city's level as public lighting, electrical vehicles charging, powering systems for water pumping, irrigation, and purification, for example. In the case of the mobility, Although the presence of the San Conrado metro station on the eastern part of the favela that increased the potential of overall accessibility, Rocinha lacks in a mobility system able to smoothen the internal flows and support the subway station for external urban trips. The public transportation facilities are in the absolute minimum degree covering only limited areas along the Dagavia Street through a bus line. Aside from making a low level of integrity, the streets could become swiftly narrow and the topography so erratic all over the area, creating a laborious context for non-motorized mobility. And considering Rocinha's extremely high population density, the circumstances could be the root of many other organizational problems, including safety and waste collection. And so, concluding, it can be affirmed that urban technologies can help overcoming the limitations of traditional urban planning approaches, especially in context as informal settlements. 
these technologies have a lot of potential in developing countries. And with the active participation of citizens, they allow the promotion of social inclusion and the sustainable regeneration of slums. Um, another point is the urban expansion in the next decades will take place indeed mainly in developing countries. And with sound urban planning and management, management, the world's urban spaces can become inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable, as well as dynamic hubs, hubs of innovation and enterprise. The monetary measurement through management systems able to optimize information and other data flows coming from several urban sectors could be the key to sustainable development of informal settlements. And moreover, ICT can help improving city governance, energy and resources use, delivery of urban services and creating employment opportunities. The EU uh, urban man management system is meant to support sustainable food and goods delivery, electric mobility service, energy usage, waste collection inside slums, as well as to avoid blackouts, malfunctioning of sewage wastewater systems, and to promote social inclusion. The community can benefit of new and more efficient urban services created, implemented and used within the slum that will contribute to shape a new culture on the use of energy and urban services through the active participation of consumers. And thank you very much. <laughs>